Hey guys, Prospecting Geologist here, and today I want to delve into uh, vein trends and how their interaction with the nearby rivers and creeks can either lead to uh, consistent pay streaks or inconsistent pay streaks. And uh, right now on the screen here, you can see this is a this is a hypothetical situation I set up that does not exist. Uh, there is no gold in this area, um, so don't bother trying to figure out where it is or anything. I've literally just added these place markers and stuff. Um, but basically, so what you see here, and this can be a setting that you see in other places, is that we have these three mines. Um, and this river and there's going to be some other smaller creek valleys here that if we turn on the topo you'll be able to see if it loads <laughs> um, so obviously there's these smaller creeks that drain into this larger one and these three mines represent generally if you're on the east coast and you see mines in a northeast southwest trend there's a good chance that they uh, are on the same vein, or at least a very similar vein. So here we have this set up as the red line is then our northeast southwest trending vein system that these three mines are on. Um, and from here, I'm just wondering, like, I don't know how many other people think, but like, what area would you try and prospect first? Ruling out access issues and stuff like that. And for me, I would actually probably start somewhere right down around in here. And we'll kind of go into why and everything here shortly. Um, okay. With that being the area that we would want to prospect, uh, we'll go into why this section of the river to me is going to have a more consistent pay streak, and this section of the river is going to—it's still going to have gold, and it's still worth checking out, but it's probably going to have a much less consistent pay streak, and it'll be much more spotty. Um, so we're going to delve into those things here right now. So the main reason why this area to me is going to be more consistent and this inconsistent, I've generally come up with this through a number of experiences I've had in the field with similar uh, vein trend to creek and river orientations. And generally speaking, this river valley would have cut chunk out of this entire vein system all the way down to its bottom and it would have washed it let's see let's turn on the topo and it would have washed it in a rather not showing up whoop that's the wrong button hang on here a second So this vein, as the river cut it, would have washed the contents of the vein down river in a very uh, sheet-like fashion. Okay, so basically as the as the river cut this vein, it would have washed the contents of it in a very sheet-like fashion down because as it's cutting it, each of the gold particles in these various areas is going to more or less try and move in a straight line. And I understand that some of this is floodplain, but the river had been at this point at various points. So even under this floodplain here would potentially be some very rich, uh, consistent placer gold deposits. And it'll still concentrate in and behind certain things. But generally speaking, this area potentially downriver a number of hundreds of yards to a half mile will have a fairly consistent uh, pay streak. Um, and if we also, we can, 
it'll have a nice consistent pay streak here. Whereas the area up along the river here, you still have much more of the vein intact and the river does not directly cross it. So you're gonna have a lot of gold hung up potentially in the hillsides, um, which can have other things other positives, especially for metal detectorists, if this vein produces nuggets, then this hill slope area between the vein down to the river would be a great alluvial, um, alluvial deposit for metal detecting because that gold is going to get hung up on those hillsides and in the valleys. Um, but as, come on, thingy, <laughs> as the smaller streams cut. Let's change the color here. As the smaller streams cut come on. Cut this uh, vein, the contents of it are gonna go down and they're gonna get washed into the river. But the river hasn't always been right here. So it's gonna kinda lead to gold getting hung up in certain spots of the river, but if you hit other spots, you might not find barely any gold. So like I said, these sections of the river here are definitely worth the check out, but you want to be very much more specific with your locations that you try and prospect, such as where these mouths of these feeder creeks to the main river that cut the vein come into the river is where you'd want to hit it. Um, and that would give you a much better chance of finding good gold. But there could be sections of this river here parallel to the vein that just don't produce nearly as well and consistently. Um, but for you metal detectorists hunting for nuggets, this strip of land here would be prime, prime real estate for you guys. So another reason why this downstream area of where the vein crosses is going to be better and more consistent than this area that's parallel to it is that it also has the added benefit of any gold that had washed in up here and been then washed downstream has the chance to accumulate in here as well to add more gold to it that just the river hasn't cut right here. Um, so that's another bonus to that. Uh, but this is this is just a useful thing when you're out prospecting to try and pick your locations better based off the orientation of a vein trend. Um, but once again, to get those vein trends, you're going to have to do your research because wow, most vein systems in the South Atlantic Piedmont run northeast southwest. I will say that there are some that do run in other directions, such as uh, northwest southeast. And if that were the case, say like in this area here, you had a uh, different that then, and as you're doing your research, it says that this mine also had a vein trend running off. In that direction that could potentially change where your primary area of prospecting would be. Um, in this case with this setup and orientation of everything I would actually still want to start down here because you would just get the added benefit of accumulation from both of those below this whereas up here you would only get the accumulation of this one vein being cut. Um, but if this vein is only producing, say, nuggets and larger gold, then it may not have been able to travel even that couple a hundred yards or so downriver to get past the other vein. Um, so that's some things to think about with that. And another thing I'll say is when you're sampling, and I've made this mistake, start start a few hundred yards downriver of wherever the, you believe the vein system is because if you start right up where you think it is, one, the accuracy of where you think it is could be fairly off. And then two, 
sometimes the gold doesn't hang up on this vein system here. It'll actually kind of be barren right where it's coming out. And I've made this mistake a couple times and kind of overshot and got into nothing in some of these areas. Um, those are just some other things to keep in consideration. Uh, yeah, so I hope this video helps you guys with finding more consistent pay streaks and helping you uh, just get a better idea of picking ideal locations in the field before you ever get to the field based off of research and reading you've done from the nearby mines that then tell you this type of information. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Um, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And also check out my new Patreon page. I will put the link below for that. Um, check out that page and stuff and see if, if this is the stuff you'd like. Maybe you want to join and there will be more uh, information related to some of these videos being posted up in there as well as early access to these videos. Um, so yeah, hope you get more gold out there.